Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about coding rules for your game and using scripts for the exceptions. Now this is something that I've talked about a lot. It came up most recently in a video I did on using game mechanics for storytelling. And in the comments for that video, Infinite Warrior, who I think is like all the other warriors, but uncountably bigger, asked me to explain, quote, how utilizing the mechanical as opposed to the scripted approach might be able to mitigate some of that seemingly necessary kind of wonkiness, unquote. Basically talking about bizarre states you can get into in some games. Now I've linked that video below on mechanics for storytelling, but I've also linked my video on emergent gameplay and another one on how to do multiple, how to get multiple quest solutions out of your game more easily. And they all basically rely on the approach I mentioned in the title, which is try to get your system mechanics coded as simply and as directly as possible. Try to cover almost all the cases so that the rare exception is what gets scripted, not tons of the game being scripted. Scripts should be used surgically saying, oh, in this one case, we're going to do this thing that's slightly different. Now, I played many RPGs that rely on scripts to handle their game state and changes to game state. The bugs that you see arise from that, I'm sure you've all seen in games where you do something that's not expected. Maybe you shoot an NPC and he keeps talking even though he's lying there dead. Or you shoot a guard from a distance and as you approach the the house, the, the dead body rotate towards you and says, Stop, thief. It's because somebody handled with scripts what should have been handled in code. And that's the biggest problem with scripts is that they miss things. Um, and even worse than that, even if one script catches things, catches it, a dozen others may miss it. So code mechanics are great because they, they, catch, they often catch things that scripts miss. And if you do miss something in code, you change it in one place and it's caught everywhere. And I'll go into that. Let me give you an example of a very simple example that could be in just about any RPG you've played. And I'll talk about the do's and don'ts about how this should be done. Let's say that your player is given a quest to go to some house, break in, and steal an item. <clears throat> now what you, what you should do, and I think most people would understand and accept this, is there should be code for stealth, you know, handling whether or not uh, NPCs, especially hostile NPCs, see you, notice you, react to you. And there should be code for how to pick a lock. You do not, so that's what you want to do. You want code for those. You do not want to put a script on every guard, on every window, on every door, or even areas like, oh, this is a brightly lit area. I'm going to put a big script trigger here. So if the player enters it, the guards go, oh, look, there's a thief over there. You do not want to do that. There are so many ways that can go wrong. Similarly, I think everybody would agree that guards probably should have a code on them so that they have the KOS, kill on sight flag on them. If they ever see the player, they just attack them. And yeah, they can do a bark and go, hey, you're not supposed to be here and attack. What you do not want to do is add scripts to all those guards to make them attack the player. Because again, there are so many ways those scripts could go wrong. Um, if they don't see the, and the player, the player's stealthing, the player's invisible, uh, the guard has been knocked unconscious. Unless every script you write checks all those conditions all the time, you're going to have a failure and it's going to be really noticeable by the player. This is where I start to see things that people don't do. You do want to mark the item the player is coming in to steal for the quest as a quest item. 
maybe if you're really good, if you if, if you you can convince the programmers to do this and all the designers to fill in the data, not only when it's marked as a quest item, not only is it a flag saying I'm a quest item, but there's a pointer back to the quest. It's a quest item for. This way, it's handled in code that as soon as the player, through whatever means, picks up that item and it goes into their inventory, automatically the quest is advanced from find the item to now you have the item, go back to the quest giver. And you can put in safeguards like, oh, it's a quest item, so you can't accidentally drop it. You can't accidentally sell it. Either the game warns you you're about to do that or it just disallows it altogether. And maybe what you decide to do with quest items changes during development. You originally were asking, but QA told you it's really annoying. Just don't let me do that. So it stops asking and just doesn't let you do that. Trivial to change in one spot in code. A pain to change if you've handled quest items in scripts everywhere. What you, and there's other reasons though you do not want to put scripts on the item. You do not want to put a script on the item itself saying, oh, I've been picked up. Am I being picked up by the player? Because maybe, you know, in some of my games, companions could pick up. And maybe that counts, maybe it doesn't. You do not want to put a script on the chest saying, oh, they've accessed the chest. I'm going to go ahead and advance the quest. Maybe they don't take the item. Or maybe they take the item and they put it back in. What you really don't want to do is put a script on the room itself. And yes, I've seen people do this where as soon as the script is triggered when they enter the room, it starts watching for the player to pick up the item. First of all, that means the script is activating every single frame tick, or if you have a separate tick heart rate for scripts, every single tick, it's going, did he pick it up yet? Did he pick it up yet? Did he pick it up yet? Incredibly wasteful, incredibly wasteful code. So much easier just to, in your code, for the players picked up an item, you go, oh, is it a quest item? Great. Let me adjust anything that needs adjusting. I mentioned I mentioned this earlier, but the advantage to all this is notice that code is in one spot. You usually have a, and I like to code this way, a place where whenever the player picks up an item, there's one place in the game it goes through. This is usually where you pick up, you check, can they pick it up? And that checks things like, is this an item that can be picked up? Uh, is it too heavy? Is their inventory already full? Things like that. Well, that means you've set up your code so that there is a choke point in the code where you know it flows through there. That's a great place to check. Once you know they can pick it up and they're about to put it in their inventory, check right at that spot to see if it's a quest item. Very unlikely that that will cause bugs. Scripts, every single script out there will have to check for it manually if you don't do it in code. And some of them are gonna do it differently and some of them are gonna do it wrong. So the way you should be thinking about scripts, just like my title suggests is, scripts are for that rare event that general rules somehow aren't covering. And you may think, I'll just make rules that are incredibly general and they will cover everything and I won't need scripts. Well, that might happen. I've worked on too many RPGs to find out that occasionally you're going to have the thing that can't be covered in the rules. It's special. Maybe it's a boss creature. Maybe it's a special artifact level item, but it needs to do something special. So my rules for scripts is if you have to use it, if there's no way this can be part of the coded general rule set, if you have, if so, so if you have to use a script, first put the script as close as possible to the action it's testing. For example, if you just want to, if you for some reason you need a script knowing that the player is broken into a house, don't put the script on a door because what if the player climbs in through a window or climbs up to the roof and comes down for a hatch? You, you can't guarantee they're gonna get in that one door. And you may think you've set it up to do it, but there was a speed run for the Outer Worlds where I was surprised how somebody got into an area and it's because when I played the area, the electric fence couldn't be jumped over. 
But later on, a level designer went, oh, I'm going to put some crates over here. And a speedrunner found out you could jump on the crates and then jump over the fence. Now, that was a perfectly valid way of getting in. He, the, the level designer didn't break anything. But it made me go, oh, if there had been a script on the gate, it would have totally missed the fact that the player found another way in. Similarly, let's say you want to put a script on an NPC seeing the player. Um, yes, you can put the script on that, on that NPC and say, if he sees the player, this is what happens. You don't want to put the trigger on an area that would activate when the player enters it because maybe the, when the player enters that area, Maybe the NPC is a guard with a walk path and he's nowhere near the player. So he shouldn't be seeing the player. Or maybe the NPC is turned around and isn't facing that area. So it's super confusing if he suddenly whoops around and goes, ha-ha. Maybe the player is invisible or has a really good stealth. So there's no way the NPC should have been able to see him. Then this is going to confuse the player because it's like, I thought the game worked this way and then this one spot it works this other way. Worse, what if the player already knocked the NPC unconscious? or worse, has killed the NPC. If the script triggers on the NPC seeing the player, the code should never fire that script because an unconscious or dead NPC doesn't see the player. If you try to do it, handle this all on scripting, where you just have a script on the NPC and it's constantly checking to see if the NPC sees the player, you may miss that. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm sure you've all seen things where a dead guard turns to face someone or says something. That's bad. The one last thing I want to say about scripts are if a script tests a condition, try to have that condition something that's in code. This can be things like if the NPC can see the player. Have that can see player be a code condition where the script calls that and then code says yes he can see the player no he can't see the player similarly is the npc close to the player um is the does the npc have this item on them or are they wielding this item you want all these tests to be in code for two big reasons one it's probably faster and more efficient for the code to test that than for the script scripts tend to be interpreted tend to be slow even if they're compiled i guarantee you the code will probably be more efficient and second, what I said earlier, if you decide to change what it means to see the player, maybe invisibility is 100%. Maybe you're changing the rules and how stealth works. If you decide what, what it means for an NPC to be close to the player, so you're checking is close to, maybe you change that. You want to change it everywhere, not in just one spot. And you don't have to go and change dozens of scripts because they all decided on a different distance for meaning close to. Now, especially if you wa watch my one on multiple quest solutions, I think Fallout was successful because we used mechanics so heavily and just supplemented it with scripts because we tried to keep scripting as close to and specific to what it was testing that was very specific to a very particular situation and we let code handle everything else and that's why the rescue Tandy from the cons quest had so many solutions because most of them were handled through code and the level designer and the the quest designer didn't even have to think about putting those solutions in and by the way um, I'm a huge advocate for using uh, for games using mechanics not just for gameplay but also for story advancement which is why there was that whole using mechanics for storytelling video. Now, Arcanum also maintained quest and story states in code, meaning whether a quest was, you know, mentioned, achieved, completed, botched, whether a story, whether story was in state, you know, act one or act four, that was all maintained in code. While it could be adjusted via scripts, the, um, the reason we maintained it and you had to access it and you had to conditionally test it through code was that prevented a lot of weird things from happening. Um, some of the biggest ones were letting the player turn down a quest he'd already completed, which was weird. You know, it's like you show up with a quest item and, and the person goes, I want you to go find something. It's great. Instead of the dialogue could go, oh, I see you have the item I asked for. 
or worse, it completed quests from being botched after they were completed. So if you were supposed to rescue the princess, and if she died while you were returning her, that would botch the quest. But if you'd already retrieved her and she's back at the castle and later on something happens and she dies in the castle, that shouldn't botch your already completed quest. It's done. They thanked you. You've gotten your reward and you've left. The princess is no longer your concern. Code helped prevent that. Scripts, on the other hand, were a nightmare if you tried to do things through that. So just remember this rule. Code the rules, script the exceptions. And I think that will make your RPG much more robust.